Another go. We're nothing if not determined. Let's see if this worked. Come on. Please work. Fingers crossed. Holy shit! We are back. All right, well now we know that it's not my internet. Oh my god, all right, five to five. This game is an absolute bloodbath. All we've done is injected you right into the middle of the action. It's what you've wanted all along. Popoa, what's up? El Regina, we back. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. Uh, let, <laughs> let's... Me with the Discord stream. Oh, damn straight. Okay, oh god, I hope tabbing over doesn't, doesn't fuck this up. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. We're just walking. We're walking on a tightrope here. All right. Here we are. Back in the game. 12 minutes, 44 seconds in. A happy dream. Let's get to it. <laughs> I was just going to sort of throw it at you and be like, now analyze everything for me. Uh, but that wouldn't be fair. Kills already. Yes. Six. The the opposite of game one. The Game one was... Uh, patience uh measured uh decisions uh and this has been clearly a bloodbath papoa said how long was game one it was like 30 ish 35 ish minutes something along those lines um who can say who can remember that was so long ago um okay this bot lane has actually been working out the senna wukong very interesting bot lane. They've got three kills between them, but the Jinx has two kills. Oh, look at Graves Wukong right there. The ult gets dropped. This was a trap, and they pull it off. Oh, my God. First Eyed, then Oathbringer. A great little trick played uh, by Crypto Witch Esports. Well done from them. Uh, Scion and uh, Tom Kench have also been having a, a fairly bloody lane. Actually, no lane has been untouched uh, by the Carnage, it looks like. Uh, Corky, the only one to have been uh, well and truly been fully picked off. The only part of this game I saw was Corky got first blooded, actually, yeah. by Cassian. Um, was it fucking sick nasty? Would you you want to describe it to I, us? What's the if you had yeah, to Cassio? Like, well, I think it was approximately like four twenty eight, maybe. Okay, good. Specific time. Good. We've got a very specific time. Golden hour. The the you know the sun coming through my window. Yeah. Oh my god, the flash forward, but a flash away. <laughs> well done. Oh my god, that's a fast horse. Oh, oh no. Thrum, 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 thrum. Oh, but he ults no. over He's the wall. He does live. Oh my god! I snipes the mid laner from all the way down in the bot lane. Oh, that is patience right there. God, what a good catch. Uh, and with that, they push over the bottom turret. Hey, this has been a bloody game. They are totally tied up in gold. They're tied up in dragons. The advantage, I don't even know who it goes to. Here we go, another, more action, another gank in the top lane, Scion in the 1v2, Graves slowly taking him down, Tom Kench making a meal of it, tosses him back under tower, and that is going to be it for the boss, the boss, the boss 800. Uh, Toronto Raptors and Crypto training from downtown, holy shit, still basically tied up, uh, what it's worth yeah it's pretty even um and both teams have like we said the comparable scaling yeah so we'll have to see how it goes Ooh. i don't quite know i mean graves is getting quite strong he actually went gale it's really strange usually graves are just going for the shield bow it did receive some nerfs on this last patch mm -hmm. so maybe it's just he thinks that like he doesn't need it, but I would definitely be afraid of Supersonic Hecarim running at me. Um, but if yeah. he wants to have the Gale Force to have instant backline access, then I also see um, his reasoning for that as well. Totally. I mean, clearly using it to great effect, 2, 1, and 5. No Puede Ser has uh, got the most kill participation on his team. Uh, man's everywhere. He's doing a great job hunting with that big old shotgun of his. 10 seconds till this Mountain Drake uh comes up uh same soul 
Uh, so nothing for the players to adjust to here. Oh, wait, sorry. Ocean? Do you also see Mountain in the bottom right corner? Or am I crazy? I might be crazy. Here it is either way. All right, let's see. That's the sign. Ult being dropped right there. Red team is going to grab the dragon. That is going to be sword. The fight is going to start. Yumi ult being dropped. Senna being absolutely eliminated. A great knockup from Scion. And a Corky package across the middle. Oh my god, oh that's a lot of god. damage over time being done. And Oathbringer's next to fall. That's a double kill for the Corky. And I get sniped. Ooh. That was a rocket over the wall right there. That was a predict if I ever saw one. Whoo. Wow. I'll tell you what, man. All but one for the side of CG Sword this quirky package on one item just obliterates the enemy team. Hecarim with a Yumi on top of him, unable to get out of the quirky package damage over time. It just gets destroyed and this Wukong able to get onto the back line. And now Corky went from 0-2 to 3-2 with that triple kill. Jesus. Completing his coal will probably be able to potentially back and buy a full item we'll have to see where he what he does with his gold here but and pretty crazy can i just say it's not even like sword was doing something riskier it was in the wrong place oh here we go let's see what hecarim can do this is of course uh a 2v2 with the yumi on the back but Ooh. no point is there oh my god hold on let's see teleport is interrupted right there Tom Kench is going to take a lot of turret shots. Let's see if he can get locked up in an infinite stun combo here, but it's not enough. He is a tanky boy. It was mentioned before, but that Tom Kench is going to get big. Now he's the one who's channels the stuff. I that Tom Kench might win the, like, extended fight with the healing from his tongue lash. Yeah. I mean, they might as well both have a million health. This is, this is peak top lane, folks. The biggest, the baddest, the brawliest. Here he comes still back going. in. He's still going yeah, back I love in. Tanks. Dude, this is nuts. Let's go. Wait, Sion ran out of mana and I had to reevaluate that fight because he started it at 75% health and it got uh, knocked down. That was going to go the way it's on Genj. That, like, go on Reddit and then actually, like, want to meta cracks me up. <laughs> cracks me up. What a bunch of idiots, hey, honestly. Man. It's real. It's real. And if any of you are in the chat, I don't care. You're idiots. <laughs> Tank meta is so boring. Do you not remember the Poppy, Sunfire, Frostfire meta where the tanks were just like instantly killing you? It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, shiny golden time. Was I playing Maybe tanks carries then? that meta. Yeah. Like, I think that was the time Arden Sensor existed too. It was, it was, a, yeah. it was a dark time. Oh my sure. god. Fucking flashbacks. Uh... uh Regardless, we've got a little bit of scouting going on here. Wards being cleared out. Uh, I mean, they've got the Jinx. They've got the Cassiopeia. Dang, I'm just... Oh, I was... Yeah, go go for it. I was thinking prior to that like massive turnaround, the game was looking good for the side of uh, Sword. They'd able, yes. They were able to get not only the dragon, but a kill. Totally. But then when, when that with that quirky package coming and flipping the game on its head... Now I I don't know if it's looking so good. Now I I don't think the I don't think like red team necessarily is afraid of like oh we're outscaled so the game's over. I don't think that's right. the case. But Corky getting pretty much forced back into the game off that play and with Wu Kong able if Wu Kong is just able to get onto Jinx and kill her every fight yeah or even Asio it will be very hard for them to win because they 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 have like a very Traditional like two damage dealers, you know, enchanter and two tank comp, right? Yeah. So we'll have to see like exactly if they can like position themselves and fight, but it might be hard. And uh, like what we talked about last game, quirky package sinks to the dragon uh, timer, right? So yeah. every single dragon quirky should have that up. And with the new low cooldown of teleport. Um, after 14 minutes, he should always pretty much be able to teleport in with it. Uh, so we'll have to see. What I'm also interested about is the long-standing implications of these games, because now that the low-budget LCS is playing the regular season in groups, these two teams are actually going to see a lot of each other. So games like this, where you see back-to-back -back games of Corky being, uh, oh my god, I'd, hold on. 
Who's it? That's Cassiopeia. Oh my god, a good flash over the wall, but it might not be enough. Tom Kent walking forward. Oh, there it is from downtown Scion, able to show up and help out the good old snake. Oh, was he stopped? Yes, he was stopped. Cassiopeia kiting with what little space they've got. Oh, it's going to be a blast cone. Hecarim's going to go over the wall. So tanky, it doesn't matter. Like... Dude, it's crazy. He's such a big catfish. He's so tanky. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Grande, Tom. Is that other guy said? Grande, Tom. And here they go. They're on the There's... dragon, but here's the pack. Oh, let's see if they get it. Red team takes it, even with no Nopletis there coming in and dropping the ult. Trying to go for another cheeky steal. We remember you on Viego, man. We know you can do it. You don't need to show off. Uh, oh, but package is up. So they are on soul point, though, which yes. is pretty good. How do you think uh, Ocean Soul is going to uh, affect this? Affects this. Ocean Soul is definitely... I barely we'll speak good one on language. Them. Yes. But I will say that uh, it doesn't really prevent, like... Package is going to get potential... dropped right there. God, it's so much damage. If there's a potential one shot onto the carry, then the Ocean Soul will matter, but the extended yeah. fights it does. Yeah. Yeah, definitely we're looking at, uh, we want, uh, uh, or, uh, Couch uh, Gaming Sword wants to push this game off as long as they can. They're in a position to scale with the Cassiopeia and the Jinx, and also potentially being able to secure this soul point. So it is a matter of just what can you do to stem the tides of chaos that are flowing forth from Crypto Witch Esports, uh, because they are doing a really good job of pushing their lead. The base is already cracked. We're paying, playing at a much faster tempo uh, than game one. Um, I mean, that inhib is is up for grabs, potentially. But so is Baron. We'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. Right now, uh, both teams are kind of spread out a little bit. We've got two uh, pairs of uh, killing groups wandering around. We've got the uh, Senna Wukong. Now it's going to run into the Hecarim Yumi. Let's see. Cassiopeia not far behind. But Tacitus here is just going to get locked up. Red buff will be secured. I think we're about to, to see a similar Baron dance as uh, the one that we saw in uh, game one. Definitely possible to play this. Sarah going over the wall right here. Tacitus. Uh-oh. Going to get locked up. So much follow-up damage with the Wukong. And now Yumi's going to be caught out. Oathbringer brought low to the ground there. Here. This is what they have to do. Because the they are, like, on the soul point. The yeah. The threat of the soul is there. Which, again, the soul might not matter in the grand scheme. Yeah. But the fact that it, it is, like, you it's know, a factor. they can't get it. Getting the pick on the jungle oh. and forcing the Baron will help them build their lead. I am more. so psyched to watch 40. Oh, okay, hold on. Rocket hits here. They're burning down Baron. Okay, blue team gets it. Not going to lie, I was fully distracted by the two tanks hitting each other, and I was just really psyched to see that happen for 40 minutes. Uh, but very solid Baron secure from Crypto Witch. Jinx. Oh, Jinx stops their back. Wait, they were going to go for the kill right there. Oh, my God. Can they get a crit? Will they be able to? No, they're going to get taken down. Fast fingers, though. Almost able to walk away with a kill. Yeah, almost. Um, but that was, again, more gold into the graves. Uh, no put it there is like having quite a series. Both games doing quite well. Getting super big on this graves. Working towards his third item. I assume it will be smart to 10. I think he'll probably go for the Lord Dominic so he can... Uh, have a chance of getting through this front line easier. We'll see. We will indeed. Back to another Baron Siege. This is playing along the script of the last game as well. Crypto Witch grabbing Baron and now sieging down these towers. Definitely doing a good job. Not making a play for that top side just yet. They want to stay grouped up. They want to take advantage of this situation. They've got another wave coming in right here. It's going to be up to Cassiopeia and Jinx to clear these waves as best they can. I think this tower is going to fall. We might get a fight breaking out right after. We'll see if there's any engage that can be dropped. But right now, Comfy Sword Gaming is just pushed back, forced to be reactive. As Crypto Witch swings around, takes this top inhibitor finally. And with these two inhibs down, that is going to leave a path to Dragon quite open. It's starting in 45 seconds i don't know if they're gonna try and start a fight right here this is where decision making is crucial but it's also difficult because is there even a good decision to make on well, the side at this of point 
at this point, it's not looking good. Uh, they might just say, screw it, we're just going to try to get the, the soul. But with the enemies down, if they lose that fight, enough men up on the enemy team, then they could potentially lose the game. Yeah. So they might opt to give it up. They do have the time to give it up, but it's not like they're banking on completely outscaling, right? Because they're really not going Another to. Friend. Right. But no, what absolutely. they could be banking on is item spikes. They could say, okay, we'll wait until we have one item on Jinx. Or one more item on Jinx, one more item right. on Cassiopeia. What's the furthest and that we can push it until we know that we have to fight, that there's no other option, that the only way that the Nexus isn't going to explode is if we win a fight right now? It seems like they're waiting for that moment. Jinx backing to grab some items. He's going to rally forth, run to the front lines here. But look at, the, look at where the positioning of Corky and Tom Kench right now. Like, they are just... Traps on traps on traps on the side of Crypto Witch Esports. They're going to clear out this wave. Baron, probably close to uh, being done soon. I'm not even going to click over to it yet because I don't want to miss this fight Another if it breaks friend. out. They've got time to clear the wave, but there is a lot of poke on the side of Crypto Witch as well. And they're just winning the poke war as well as the... Uh, the uh, uh, split war as well. They've able to. They've been able to cut the map. God, that was barely a sentence. Um, they've been able to cut the map up, and now they're able to focus all of their attention onto this bottom lane. Crypto Witch is exactly where they need to be. Obviously, Sword Gaming is going to need to send people to collect these waves. Jinx is on that duty right now. But as the health gets chipped away, there might be a fight like this. Wukong goes in, gets to the back line, Senna ult gets dropped as well. So far, no one's fallen. Tacitus forced to ult in retreat. They are able to take one person down. Jinx is excited. Can Yumi get on top of them? Is this going to be enough? This is Zion's passive going off. Maybe going to be able to get a kill. Nope. Puede Ser is going to survive, and they will both back off having lost one member the wukong for the scion but the inhibitor still falls they have to retreat take care of those waves do you think that was enough do you think that that is a good enough sign that they might be able to win a fight uh, down the lane or is this just proof that crypto witch can just go even for the rest of the game but every time they go even they take a little advantage Is that powder from Arcane? Yes, that is powder from the popular. You know, they made a really cool TV show, and then they made a whole video game around it. And uh, I think that was super cool, though. No, Play This Air is having a great showing. Absolutely. Uh, no, he's been, been on fire in the last two games. Great steals in the last game, and this game is just... Uh, I mean, the man's putting on a master class of hurt here. All yeah, three. I mean, he's just having quite the series. Definitely a great first showing for him. Uh, but just Crypto Witch in general having a great first showing. No, absolutely. KP Man can say, and I like that they added the champions from Fortnite. And you're right. And I, I hope agree. that they add more champions from Fortnite. Because uh, I think we're all big fans of the game. And we're only here because of Fortnite. So that last dragon was taken away from them, right? They're in this position of just having to take... Uh, clear these waves of supers, which, you know, it's not horrible. You're getting gold onto your carries. Uh, it just has got to be enough. Jinx has three items. Do you think those three items potentially lead to a victory in a fight? A happy dream. Well, let's find out. Tacitus ghosting in. Absolutely. A teleport is coming from behind. Tacitus dropping so low, being dropped down. But then Yumi will fall as well. And now it's going to be a 3v5. No one has yet fallen from Crypto Witch. And that is going to be the Cassiopeia. That is going to be the Jinx falling. And now it is just the Scion and Crypto Witch clean up once again, proving that they are no one to be trifled with as they push down these towers and take the series in a 2-0. Good on them. Oh. Wow. GG. GG. Congrats to Crypto Witch for their first victory of season six of the LBLCS. Executive is going to have to contend uh with uh with Crypto Witch, you know? That this is this is just showing who's in your pool right now. And I think that Sword can easily go back to the drawing board and say, okay, next time we meet them, we're going to come uh, ready, we're going to come correct, uh, and we'll have some strategies. Oh, X-Ranger, what's up, man? Um, uh, 
So, should we do, uh, you know what? Let's do a, uh, a quick, uh, interview. Um, I'm going to message both teams. We'll get them in here one at a time. The interview is optional, by the way. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. But this is, uh, you know, beginning of the season. And we thought, why not? Let's also see if I can get... There's background music, low fi Hold on a sec here. Beautiful. There's some music. All right, let's see what people are saying. All right, cool. Uh, we're gonna do Comfy Sword Gaming first. Um, let's see. Hop into General and we'll pull you up. So yeah, if you are uh, watching, and uh, just send uh, one player, uh, whoever would like to, to come on, maybe give us a little insight into the game and see what you guys are thinking about uh, the season coming up. Um, but just hop into the community channel. Awesome. All right. We are going to pull up TTVI20. Welcome to the desk. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. How you doing, man? Doing good. Doing good. Rough one, but it was it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> Dude, but you, it seems like you've got a good attitude about it. I think that's the key to comebacks in the future. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So so uh, talk talk to us a little bit. Uh, uh, you guys are going to be in a group with this team, right? You think you walked away with some valuable lessons? You think you you're going to be able to make these adjustments going forward? What's the feeling playing in a in a group format where you know you're going to run into the same opponents a lot? Yeah, um, first series was like definitely tough. Like shout out to uh, Crypto, like they just came out to play. Like they brought out their um, big guns today. Um, mm -hmm. But I think like we're very excited about the next couple of games. I think this was our second game that we've played together as as uh five so i think like sure. we're still getting uh used to used to like each other but i'm gonna make a prediction i'm gonna say um comfy gaming sword as well as comfy gaming shield we're finishing top just saying that right Ooh, now. all right I, just saying that. fighting words hell yeah <laughs> like the confidence hey it's fact it's a it's gonna happen it's well, gonna happen. <laughs> listen, we're we're gonna keep checking in with you guys uh uh throughout this season. Uh well we got you here. Anything you wanna say uh to the fans out there, to the people watching, uh anything that's on your mind? Um, I just wanna say thank you all for um stopping by and um watching. Shout out to L B L C S for like accepting us. Um we are super duper excited and yeah, we're definitely gonna perform a whole lot better the next the next couple of games for sure. Uh, well, hell yeah! Thank you so much uh, for coming on the desk, giving us a couple minutes of your day, and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day, man. Thanks for coming on. No problem. You too, man. Take care. Yeah, peace. Um, awesome. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I talked to Crypto Witch Esports. Uh, they all uh, dipped totally understandably because we didn't tell anybody that we were going to do an interview afterwards. But now you know. Uh, I got a couple of things to say uh, that are uh, important uh, to... Hold on. Let me do the prediction real quick. Prediction. Who won? Choose outcome. It was Crypto Witch Esports. All right. Here are a couple of things. One... Did you like watching this stream, even through all of the technical errors? What? Uh, which, again, are basically a character in the low-budget LCS. Uh, well, awesome. If you want your game to be streamed, go into the Discord. Uh, make sure that your captain or whoever on your team is posting in the streaming schedules channel. Uh, you'll see a little rubric of how you should make the posts and tell us uh, who you're playing and when and what group you're in, because we would love 
to stream more games. Uh, we've got another stream that's going to be coming tomorrow. I think I'm also probably going to pick up a Tuesday stream. We might have someone doing a Wednesday stream. And we also do have a Thursday stream. So there is much more to come. Uh, and if it is your first ride along with us, you will meet the array of characters uh, that make up the low-budget LCS. Some of us are up here on the desk, but a lot of them are in the Discord. And speaking of that, if you are new here and you like any of this, you should join our Discord. Click around, make some friends. Don't be a stranger. Our DMs are open. Uh, you can say hi. Um, and uh, yeah, I see a lot of Panther Core chants in the... Uh, we are That's streaming Panther Core uh, this week, though, I believe. Cringe. Cringe, though. Yes, also... Um, and of course, real quick, I didn't even get to these uh, followers. Uh, KP Monken, MBL Manny, Cold Hacker Gaming, and Trendy. Thank you guys so much for being the newest investors in the low budget LCS. We will see you at the board meetings in Vermont at the Denny's. You gotta go around back, talk to our buddy Todd. He's the assistant manager, he'll let you in. Pancakes are on us. We have Twitter as well. Holy and shit, we do. Yes, please. A YouTube channel where the VODs will be uploaded, probably. Probably. And yes. Make sure to check out uh, whatever. What is our lovely sponsor? ProComps. 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 Use the code low budget L or LBLCS25, right? Or low budget yes. LCS25? Definitely use the code LBLCS25. That helps us out up here cold hacker gaming says yeah. do we get chicken wings not a pancake person hell yeah man we just open up the menu in its many folds you can have whatever you want bro you can have whatever you want remember Talks. to check them out the app seems pretty accurate tonight yes so maybe you could use it to get a leg up in your respective leagues as well god he's so good he's so yeah. good also make sure to follow the stream if you haven't yes and yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see you guys tomorrow when we stream. It is the beginning of the season, so the stream should be going fairly regularly. Yeah. So make sure to tune in. Also, if you're part of the Discord, there will be announcements in the Discord. <laughs> and Bigfoot Wow thinks he's a funny stuff. person by saying, "What time does the game start?" But you know very well when the game started. <laughs> um. Yes. I believe. I'm pretty sure. That's it. I think. Did I miss anything? You are so good at shouting things out, so I defer to your expertise. That's, yeah, it's one of my many talents, you it know. It is. Um, no, I think that's gonna be it. Sweet. Let's uh, let's raid Travis Gafford. If you want, all right. So, all right, our stream's done. If you need to go do something, go do something. We're gonna raid Travis Gafford. He's got 461 people watching right now. He is playing Genshin Impact. It has nothing to do with League of Legends. Other people, they might try to lie to you. They might try to shoehorn you in, try and sell you on following this raid. But me, I'm just telling you the truth. If you want to see some uh, Genshin Impact, we're going to raid him. Maybe he'll say our name. That would be cool. Uh, either way, Travis, if you ever see this, what's up, dude? I hope that you win Genshin Impact. All right, we're raiding now. Goodbye. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow.